Hi guys, welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're going to make some simple stylized hair like this using a combination of sculpting for the base and some curves for the thinner strands. Because it's a little bit of an odd shape, I've put a few blueprints for the base hair on Dropbox in case you wanted a rough guide for the general shaping stage. There is a front, side, and top view that you can import into the viewport if you'd like. Okay, let's jump in. Okay, so I'm going to get started with the base form. Shift A and adding in a rounded cube, which you can get by enabling the built-in add-on called Extra Objects in the Edit Preferences menu. I'm going to change the radius to 1 and then the arc divisions to 16. S to scale it up. And we're done. Looks great. If you wanted to do a little bit more, you can control tab into sculpt mode. I'm going to turn off X symmetry here so I can get the swooping asymmetrical look I'm going for. Then with the elastic deform brush, I'm going to pull it into the general shape. Once I have the general shape, I'm going to increase the resolution of the object so I can get a little bit more control over the shape by pressing Shift R and decreasing the voxel size. Once I have the voxel size set, I press Control R to perform the voxel remesh. Now I'll quick smooth by holding Shift. and then some more pushing and pulling with the Elastic Deform brush. Okay, now I'm going to switch to the clay strips brush here and then invert it by holding control to start carving out some subtle waves in the hair. Here I'm switching to the crease brush to help out with forming some of the waves in the hair. and then some more smooth brush to take down the sharp edges a bit. Okay, so that's good for now. I like this shape. I realized at this point that I hadn't added any eyebrows or eyelashes, so I thought I would add them in. I'm going to shift A and add in a single vertex, which is also available through the extra objects add-on. Here I have a little brain fart and name this object eyebrow, but then end up making the eyelash. So starting with the eyelash, I'm going to go up and turn the snap function on by clicking on this little magnet icon. Then clicking on the little pull down right next to it and selecting snap to face. Then I'm going to turn off project onto self and turn on project individual elements. Now when I press G to move the single vertex, it will snap onto the face of the closest object. 
Let's move it over the eyelid, then over on the modifier panel to the right, let's add in a mirror modifier. Now selecting the vertex, let's press E to extrude it to match the shape of the eyelid like this. I'm going to kick out the last vertex a bit like this, just to create a more dynamic stylized eyelash. Make sure as you make the shape that you match the same number of vertices on the top and bottom like this. Now select the four vertices on the end, press F to make a face. Now switch to edge mode and then select the edge on the right side here, open to the rest of the vertices. Now you can press F all the way down and Blender will automatically create quad faces for you. To give it a little bit of volume, I'm going to tab into edit mode. Select all the vertices by pressing A, then turn off snap to face and then press E to extrude it all out. I'm going to rotate these vertices around a bit to get a tapered shape as the eyelash goes towards the middle of the eye. Okay, I'm happy with that. Now up to the object menu and let's shade smooth. Then over to the modifier panel, let's add in a subdivision surface modifier. Now I want to make it a little bit more stylized and angular. So I'm going to tab into edit mode again and then press control R to add in some control loops. You can see as I add in control loops, it gives the geometry slightly harder edges. Okay, now to the eyebrows. Tabbing into edit mode, I'm going to select a single vertex, turn snap to face back on, shift D to duplicate this single vertex, and then move it up. Now I'm going to extrude it in a similar fashion as the eyelash, even all the way around. F to make a face, switch to edge mode, select the edge, open to the rest of the vertices, and then press F all the way down. So right now the eyelash and eyebrow are technically one object, and I want them to be separate. So once I have all the faces, I'm going to select the eyebrow and then press P on the keyboard and select selection. This will separate the selected vertices into its own object. Then I'll clean up the naming a little bit. So if you wanted it so that the eyebrow will follow any sculpting edits you may make in the future, you can add in a shrink wrap modifier and make the target your sculpt. Then add in a solidify modifier after the shrink wrap modifier in the modifier stack. And you can play with the thickness slider to get your desired look. And then I like to add in another subdivision surface modifier at the bottom of the stack to round it out a little more. Then just shade smooth. Okay, now let's get back to the hair. For the long, thinner strands, I'm going to use curves. So shift A and select curve, then bezier. I'm going to name this hair bezier curve. This will be the length of the hair. Then shift A again, select curve, then circle, then rename it hair bezier circle. This will be the width of the hair. 
With the Bezier circle selected, I'm going to tab into edit mode and pull the handles around to make a shape like this. Then I'm going to select the Bezier curve and press S to scale it up so I can see it better. Now clicking on the little curve icon here, then to the geometry section, I'm going to make the target object for the bevel to be the Bezier circle. It's looking a little big, so I'm going to select the Bezier circle and then press S to scale it down. That's a better size, I think. So now I'll tab into edit mode, and then it's just a matter of pulling the handles around to get the desired shape. Here I subdivide the curve so I can get another handle for better control over the shape. Okay, I'm happy with the shape of that strand for now. I want to add in another slightly thinner strand to make it a little bit more dynamic. So I'm going to select the Bezier circle and then Shift D to duplicate it. And then I'm going to select the Bezier curve and Shift D to duplicate it as well. Now with the new Bezier curve selected, go to the curve panel and down to the geometry section, change the bevel object to the new Bezier circle.001. Now select the Bezier circle.001 and press S to scale it down to make a thinner strand. Then again, just a matter of pulling it into the shape that you want. Okay, now working our way back to the base hair, I'm going to shift R and increase the resolution a bit by lowering the voxel size, then control R to perform the voxel remesh. I'm going to start with the clay strips brush to lay down some channels of hair and give the hair some more flow. Now a partial smooth. Then I'm going to hold control to invert the brush and do it again to create some more levels to the hair. Now I'm going to switch to the crease brush and then invert it by holding control and start accentuating the channels even more. Then some more partial smoothing. Now 
increasing the resolution a bit more with shift R and then control R, then more regular and inverted crease brush to highlight the peaks and valleys of the hair channels. And then back to the elastic deform brush to start cleaning up the overall shape and giving it a more gradual cleaner shape, if you will. Okay, I think that's good for now. I'm happy with that. Now for the final touch, the hair strand has a squared off end to it, which doesn't look the best. So let's taper it to look more like a real hair strand. I'm gonna select the strand and then press F3 for the search menu and type convert. Then select the bottom one in the list, convert to mesh from curve. So now tabbing into edit mode, you can see the curve is now an object with volume. I'm going to alt left click the end loop here and then press O on my keyboard to turn on proportional editing. Now when you press S to scale, you will see a circle that you can adjust with the scroll wheel of your mouse. This determines the gradual effect the scale on the selected vertices will have on the other vertices within the circle, allowing for a nice gradual taper. So that's it. There is one way you can make some stylized hair for your character. It could benefit from some paint and texture, but we will touch on that in a future video. In the next video, we will work on adding in some clothes, armor, and other accessories. I have a little Facebook group going now where you can share your work and ask questions a little easier. Or you can just hit me up on social media somewhere. I love seeing your guys' stuff. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I hope it helped, and see you in the next one.